rendering is more important than you might think. Let me show you why. If you neglect the rendering process and fail to spend time creating appropriate images for your portfolio, you're essentially shooting yourself in the foot. Now, if you would like to dive a bit deeper, you can always grab our free Jumpstart Hard Surface course for beginners, which will show you step-by-step -step process of how to model, render, and edit renders for your portfolio. Like I said, it's free and the links are in the video description. Rendering and editing may be the final steps in portfolio creation pipeline, but I would argue that these two steps might be even more crucial than modeling skills. And here is why. Imagine you're in a local store and you see five packages of peanuts. Essentially, they're all the same peanuts, but the quality of packaging differs for each one. Which type of package you would be more attracted to? Precisely, the one with the best visuals. The best package sells the idea of a product that was carefully planned, indicating that the manufacturer values quality right down to the last step. It will also be the best seller, obviously. If you want to attract job offers, then that's exactly why you should double down on your rendering game. Furthermore, rendering will teach you better composition, how to set lights, how to understand materials more effectively, and most importantly, it will help you appreciate your work and yourself much more. Knowledge of composition and lighting will directly improve your modeling game. Once you understand how lights react with different angles, you'll start thinking on a whole new level when designing or modeling. And let me show you a few straightforward tips that will instantly improve your rendering game. Number one, start with choosing the camera angle and framing. It's really important to adjust the light to your camera angle and not the other way around. Always begin with framing, unless you're unable to control the light, which is not the case with Blender. So set the camera first, then find the angle and focal length that you prefer. A wide angle will produce strong perspective and distortions, but will also include a lot of the scene in the frame. Now, long focal lengths, like for example, 85 and above, will compress the view and create a more intimate scene. Personally, I love working with long lenses, with most of my renders being at 85, 135, 200 and above. Now, compose the shot carefully, as this is one of the most crucial steps in creating good renders. I could teach you a lot about about composition but there are some basic tips to get you started. You can start with positioning the model roughly in one of the thirds of the image. You can slice your camera view with four imaginary lines. The points where the lines intersect are great spots to place your model. A simple rule that aligns with this rule of thirds, because that's what it's called, is the direction in which your model is facing. So if your model faces to the left side of the frame, then place it on the right side of the image to leave some breathing space in front of it. Unless you're creating a symmetrical image, in most cases you want to avoid placing models in the center of the frame as it can make them look a bit static and uninteresting. This is one of the most common mistakes I see when I look at renders online. The next step is a simple lighting setup. In most cases you will need only one light and perhaps a reflector. Operating with one light will be much easier as especially if you're new to working with lights. We use simple HDRIs like an abandoned slip away, which by the way you can get on polyheaven.com, which provides a nice flat diffused and almost omnidirectional light. All you need to do is add a few nodes via the node wrangler add-on using shift T command and simply rotate the HDRI on Z axis around your model, position the light in a way that suits your chosen camera angle. Node wrangler is a Blender native add-on, so simply enable it in references and you're good to go. If that isn't sufficient in terms of light strength, instead of adding an area light or spotlight which has a different light quality and different color to the Azure Eye, you can use a reflector. Reflector is nothing more than a plane with a simple BSDF white material added to it. Now angle it to reflect the light back onto your model from the opposite side. So if the light comes from the right, put the reflector on the left to bounce the light back onto your model. 
makes sense. And there you go, you've set up a very simple but effective lighting that will be consistent in quality and color. The next one is backdrops. Now backdrops are important and the easiest one to work with is something that we call in photography an infinite backdrop. It's nothing more than a plane which curves very gently upwards with a soft and large bevel. So you can't really see any harsh angled transitions between the planar shifts when you look through the camera lens. Infinite backdrops are often used for model photography for full body shots because they offer the advantage of ground shadows but at the same time smooth surface transitions behind the model. And that's it and once you set everything up all you need to do is choose the render settings, mine I usually cycle, render engine, GPU compute, 300 samples, denoise on and my output is set to 16-bit TIFF and no compression. Now it's also crucial to set up your light path correctly. You could go with 86688 or 12888 or basically the one I go with which is a bit overboard which is 18, 16, 16, 12, 12. Now be mindful that this will increase your render times so you know use it at your own discretion. Now also remember to add volume volumetric path if you're using volumetrics in your scene and that's about it it's you know that's how easy and simple it is to render in blender the rest is down to experimenting with angles different and more complex light setups more edgy compositions you know and so on let me provide you with some additional tips here which can be very beneficial and uh, i think are pretty pretty cool so first of all simplify menu simplify is a great new feature added to blender 3.4 series and above and it allows you to drop the texture resolution and subdivision surface modifier steps down in both viewport and render. This is fantastic if you're working on a slower computer. Simply drop the texture size in a viewport to 1k or lower and your VRAM will go down like crazy. Next tip is scene full copy. Now I often create a full copy of my scene whenever I want to render from a different angle with a different light setup. Instead of messing up my scene I simply create a new one and can easily switch between them. Now this feature is also very handy for creating instances of your models especially when you're using decals. You can put everything into one collection and instance the entire model with one click. This will enable you to add another model to your scene without impacting performance. And lastly cut out render with RGBA. Now I often render a cutout render. What I mean by that is I just render the model without the backdrop. These renders are brilliant for editing in Photoshop because they allow me to select the entire model with ease for more precise editing. In addition, this allows me to edit the background separately. When you create these, make sure that you set up your output to RGBA and A stands for alpha background. So you're going to get this nice transparent effect. And this would be all you need to know in terms of rendering basics for Blender. Like I mentioned above, if you would like some more in-depth guidance, grab this free jumpstart hard surface course for beginners or if you're really hungry for more in-depth course i would highly recommend our rendering university course which contains a ton of theoretical and practical information on lighting composition design framing and so on that's it for this video guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one